Hello. I'm here at the spinning wheel making yarn the old-fashioned way. The spinning wheel was a tool used in the early days of the United States, including here in North Carolina, in the process of making cloth. Nowadays, cloth is made in factories called textile mills. Today, hand spinners, those who operate spinning wheels like I'm doing now, make yarn as a fun hobby or a craft business. So how does a spinning wheel work? The spinning wheel is a twisting tool and makes yarn by creating twist, which my hand directs to this fluffy clump of hairs called fiber. When the right amount of twist is added, these hairs form one continuous unbroken strand of yarn, which is then wound onto a bobbin, which is right here. Let's take a closer look at how that works without the spinning wheel and see how the fibers form yarn. So in the spinning process, what's actually happening is my hands are layering the little hairs on top of one another as the spinning wheel rotates, creating twist. The hairs are getting layered, the spinning wheel is rotating, and as that happens, the strand of yarn grows. And that's what I do with my hands. I control that twist and control the formation of the yarn. And I'll show you, I'll give you some idea of how that works without the spinning wheel. So here, I am spreading out the fibers so the fibers go from being short, and then when they're layered, it makes a longer looking piece. I'm layering with my hands, and then the spinning wheel is adding rotation. So what happens is something like this. And so you can see how the yarn forms. So now we have a piece like this, rather than just a short clump of hairs. And that's basically all it is. So whether it was done by hand years ago with a spinning wheel, or done today by machines in a factory, it's basically the same process of twisting and layering fibers so that we get one long continuous strand of yarn. Let's talk a little bit about the white, fluffy stuff that I'm holding in my hands. This is hair from a sheep, otherwise known as wool. The sheep whose fiber I'm working with looks a little bit like the sheep in the painting behind me. Cotton is another very important fiber used in the process of making cloth. You probably have clothes made out of cotton. Cotton comes from a plant rather than from an animal and is grown on a farm. These fibers, whether cotton or wool, which is what I'm working with now, would first have to be prepared before they could be spun into yarn on a spinning wheel. In the case of wool, this begins with sheep on a farm. First, the sheep would need to be sheared or given haircuts, which doesn't hurt the sheep at all. Then the fiber would be washed and dried, and after that, it would need to be untangled so that it could be spun into yarn at the spinning wheel. And that process is called carding, and was done using a pair of tools like this, called hand carders which are basically like large hairbrushes used to untangle the hair. After that, the yarn could be dyed, red or blue or any color, or the yarn might be used in the sheep's natural color, which was often white, but could be gray or brown. And then after that, the yarn would be ready for the weaver to weave cloth, 
or for a knitter to use knitting needles and knit things like hats and socks. So what do you think? Would you have a lot of clothes or would you have fewer clothes if you lived long ago? The steps in the process of making cloth are not difficult, but they are very time consuming. Our modern machines in textile mills mean that we can get our clothes a lot more easily today. Although it is still fun making yarn the old fashioned way and imagining what life might have been like years ago.